the Wilder Institute and Calgary Zoo are protecting our diverse world. Let's work together to bring the climbers back. Nimble and mighty, secretive and fierce. Fishers use their climbing abilities to help them hunt, protect their young, and travel across temperate and boreal forests throughout North America. These skilled climbers prey on squirrels, rabbits, and even porcupines. Fishers help keep the balance in their habitat. They may act as predators, foragers, and even prey themselves, making them an essential part of this ecosystem. North American forests were once bustling with these lively creatures, but have since seen drastic declines due to overhunting and trapping. In some cases, such as in Washington State, fishers couldn't keep up with these threats and were lost completely from the area. Together with the larger conservation community, we are coming to their rescue. Fishers are being translocated from a stable population in Alberta down to Washington to reintroduce into the wild. It's time to help these climbers rediscover what was once home. The species was completely extirpated from Washington State and for the last couple of decades, um, our partners uh, have been working to reintroduce them. After Alberta fishers are located, they are transported to Calgary where they will receive a health checkup with our team. We're looking for an animal that is in good body condition, in good pelt condition, um, healthy in every way that we can measure. So we are taking blood samples, we are taking measurements, we do a, a full body x-ray um, to look for uh, any evidence that they are in ill health that might impact their ability to survive in the wild once they're translocated. Just like with humans, it's important to make sure that fishers are in good health before making this big journey. We check their teeth, we check their claws. So it is a full physical exam, blood testing, uh, radiographs, measurements, um, every way that we can look at their health and determine that they are in as good condition as possible for this rigorous move to a new home. Reintroduction can be tricky as some fishers may do better than others. Good success, again, means a fisher that survives, gets through that first winter, um, and finds a mate and breeds. So we're releasing both males and females. Um, and, and certainly uh, our partners in Washington have um, camera trap information that some of these fishers have successfully reproduced, have raised litters, um, and continue to contribute to those populations um, going forward. Part of this process is investigating whether a fisher's physical and behavioral traits will impact their survival and reproduction in the wild. Do physical characteristics such as body size, total length, some of the things we're measuring, do those play into success on release at all? But also behavior. And how they've measured behavior is to um, have sort of 24 hour a day cameras on the ceiling of the fisher um, holding pens. We introduce these wild fishers to items they've never seen before, like rubber dog toys, and we watch to see how they react. We also record how they behave in their temporary homes. For example, we look at their active hours and how much they were moving around. So far, we have recorded a whopping 5,000 hours of video. And then they look at their behavior from a curiosity standpoint. How exploratory are they? How do they respond to something new in their exhibit? How bold are they? And are these things helpful on release or not? For example, a bold animal might be better at finding territory, but might also put it itself in the way of danger from a predator more easily than a shyer animal. Through this research, we can make informed decisions about which individuals are released and ultimately have a better chance of establishing a stable population. We attach a radio transmitter, which means they can be tracked post-release. 
Some of the animals have had a surgically implanted transmitter, which of course requires a, a veterinary team. Um, some of them this year uh, received a collar with a radio transmitter. But that means that our, our partners and the researchers in Washington State can track those animals afterwards and, um, and see how they're doing. Uh, are they setting up a territory? Are they successfully hunting? And most importantly, come next spring, um, are they reproducing? Are they contributing to the population of fishers uh, in Washington State? We've already seen successful travels for the Albertan fishers. Last year, we helped bring 20 fishers over to Washington. One translocated fisher, released in a previous year, even delivered the very first set of fisher kits born in the wild. A wild home for these climbers creates wilder places for other species and for us to enjoy. Help us make our world even wilder.